Is this all right? Okay. <laughs> Up. Tito. Yes. How's that? Great. Okay, so uh, my name is Lior. Uh, so some physical changes. Um, so since I'm a young adult, uh, I naturally would, you know, suffer from acne and things like that. It's been pretty prominent throughout my family. And um, many have actually been telling me that such an acne has died down and has stopped. I'm not sure whether it's just because of the beard that's been growing throughout the week, but hopefully not. Um, this is really lovely to hear. I've been trying to go to pharmaceuticals. I've tried Benzac, but the ingredients inside would dry up my skin. Um, it helped, but only for a brief period of time. Um, so this has been much better. Uh, but also I've suffered a lot from very severe anxiety um, since I was a teenager, since I was a kid. Um, hot and cold flushes. Um, just a lot, like something pounding on my chest, literally. This is how it would feel. Like, you know, how people would burst down a door. My heart would literally come out of my chest. I'd feel anxious. Um, to the point where that was my natural, that would be my natural state. I would just sit there and my heart would just... And what would happen is this pounding would go all the way to my arm and it was really hard that my arm would actually pound along with my heart. And because um, um, all these thoughts would be racing my mind. And I, I was just sitting there and I was thinking about this and I looked at the piece of paper and there was not really much pounding anymore. It wasn't so strong. So, throughout this program, my anxiety has most certainly improved. Um, my heart isn't beating so hard. Um, my blood pressure has lowered. Uh, throughout the middle of the program, it got a bit higher. Um, but now it's a bit lower. And I can tell you, a good sleep, never underestimate a good sleep. Yeah. It's really a strong weapon. Uh, so, yeah, this has not been happening as of late. Just in general, I feel less anxious. But also an interesting thing. Um, actually, I'll speak a bit more when I tap into the spiritual. Um, so, yeah, my sleep has also improved a lot. Uh, I've started um, really mentally marking down the power of exercise, even just doing simple stretches in the morning. Um, going for walks, really good. Um, so yeah, spiritual changes, um, what I've noticed throughout these past few days is a lot of my vulnerabilities have actually been appearing to me, um, because I've been speaking with God more and have been questioning my own genuinity with Him. And so a lot of the things that have made me vulnerable in my life have actually been opening up. And this is like, usually I'd shove them down. And, um, you know, the feelings of love that Christ would give me would be a tool to just blanket them and to shove them down. And I just feel that love instead. This is not the way to go. This is, you actually, Christ will show you your vulnerability so he can hold your hand and help you deal with them. Um, and this is really what I've learned. Um, so... There have also been a lot of private idols in my life I've had to share aside, which I'll just keep between me and God for now. Um, God's health message, which is so attacked, like we do ministry in the city and it's attacked so much. But I now seriously know the link between diet and spiritual well-being. But there's, also, there's a difference between knowing something here and knowing something here. Mm -hmm. I knew it here, but now I know it here, and I didn't before. Um, I know the importance now of constantly being connected to God and to look only to Him. Because even those feelings of love that we get from Christ can actually be idols themselves. And we can intermingle them with our feelings and counterfeit them with our feelings, even making up our own feelings and... It, like, it mixes up the whole picture. 
um, we should love and keep our eyes on Christ regardless of whether we are feeling these things or not. Yeah. And that's actually what true love is. That's unconditional love. It's not just, you know, I feel good and I'm going to love you. It's like, I'm going to actually love you in spite of that. Um, so a lot of spiritual maturity, which I've experienced, and I'm sure we all have. So I have made the following commitments to God and to myself. So to exercise... And, you know, you don't have to get a gym membership and get weights and just, you know, swing something. It's just going for a simple walk um, and getting fresh air as well, especially since now it's winter and the air is more fresh. You know, the first thing you wake up in the morning, get fresh air in your lungs. Uh, really good. So go for a walk, exercise. I've also committed to read the word as it is, not through the lens of any emotion, just as it is, um, whether I like what it says or not. It's not, uh, it's sola scriptura, you know, not sola, you know, in my opinion or emotions. Like, we, this is God's written word, um, and it's really special. Uh, I have also committed not to try, oh no, sorry, I I have committed to try and to resist sweets in social gatherings. This is really difficult because everyone's like, oh, try, try. You know, everyone wants you to have it. You want to be a part of the team. People accuse you of being a radical because you want to take care of your body. And then you feel left out. But, uh, you know, I've made this commitment to just keep going. Regardless of the occasion, so you know, if it's a birthday party, the person's gonna cry, you know, please have cake, this, that. It's like, I can't, you know. Um, so, by the way, um, just back on the physical stuff. So, I came here and I weighed, I think it was 63 or 62, and then I lost weight, and then on the recovery meals, I gained one kilo. Oh, so, I'm extremely cool. happy about this. I've been wanting to gain weight in a healthy manner for so long and um, you know the peanut butter and the, <laughs> and the hummus and you know the life-changing bread we call it Adventist bread you know it's so good um, so lovely and gaining weight in a healthy way and you know Neil Nedley points out that a key to depression is violating your conscience that's one of the 10 hit categories and when you're eating something that aligns with your religious principles, where everything aligns, it's, it's so satisfying. Like, it's really fantastic. So, uh, why did I come here? Well, that's a good question. Um, I could say, you know, I'm Seventh-day Adventist and I just came here because, you know, this is what a Seventh-day Adventist would do, this and that. But actually, I have been struggling spiritually and I did Neil Nedley's depression and anxiety recovery program and I learned a lot from that, but, you know, I didn't really apply it. And coming here for 10 days was like a reset for me to get back into it when I get back home. Also, so that was number one, um, and just to get back into things. Um, but number two, because Andre was going as well, so I, could, I had someone to annoy. Uh, on the journey um, but number three really important as well um, Ellen White says that the health message is you know we discussed this literally the right hand of you know I think it's the gospel something along those lines and uh, I really love sharing Jesus with others and um, I f before I couldn't feel like I, I could do that because as I said, I was struggling spiritually. Now I believe that I can, and I'm motivated to do so with so much more energy. Um, again, because of the healthy diet, things like that. I feel so much more energetic than I did before. I did, like, diet, I underestimated it completely. Anyhow, I really wanted to help others, and I really want to help others. And now I know the basics from this program. If someone comes up to me and says, look, I'm struggling with this, I could say, come here. I could say, try a fruit fast, or do this, or do that. And they might look at you, you know, you're crazy, but, you know, just try it. 
Um, so praise God, um, you know, just for this and uh, the health message and that fact that he gives us a heart to want to, you know, reach out and um, give and share eternal life with others. If you, like, I'm not sure about your parents, but, you know, when your child, when you have a child or your child does something so amazing, you want to tell the whole world, you know, because you love them so much. It's like Jesus, we love him so much. We, like, we can't help but share him, you know. Um, so I have so many things to thank God for and, uh, you know, learning more about myself, um, He's brought so many things out of, you know, my heart in front of my face. And, you know, this is really the love of God. And so much spiritual maturity. Um, and the people that I've met along the way, so lovely. And speaking of spiritual maturity, speaking about, you know, uh, dire spirit of prophecy, 144,000. It makes me uh, remember why I, you know, came here, why I joined everything and the fellowship, uh, how much uh, the worth of that, you know, like it's worth more than so much like gold, this or that. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Make it and the maker truly does heal. He absolutely does. So uh, praise God. Thank you. Absolutely.